The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in the gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. Yes, it's the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show, starring, well, naturally, Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong and Fred McMurray as George Harvey. And right now we find that Irene and Fred, uh, that is, Susan and George, are strolling down a carnival midway together. Isn't it exciting, George? I don't think I've been to a carnival in years. Oh, I can take carnivals or leave them alone, Susan. All pretty much the same, freaks, rides, games... Seen one, you've seen them all. George, you're not getting any thrill out of this at all. Oh, I'm enjoying it if you are, Susan. Thanks very much. It's just that to me, all these things are pretty much old hat, as we say. Well, I'm sorry we're boring you, Noah Coward. Shall we leave? Well, I don't even misunderstand you, Susan. All I said was... Hey, 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 hey. I'm well. I'm about to introduce the main attraction of the mighty midway. Gather round, men, gather round. How you read about her? Your friends have told you. And now you're about to meet in the flesh the little lady guaranteed to give new ideas to you older men and old ideas to you young ones. Hey, 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 hey! You were saying, George. What? Was I saying something? <laughs> Must have slipped my mind. Uh, Susan, uh, why don't we uh, wander over this way, shall we? Well, not if you want to go home, George. Oh, well, I wouldn't want to spoil the uh, party. <laughs> and now that you're all gathered around me, friends, step just a little bit closer, friends. Now that you're all gathered around me, I am about to introduce the little lady who could be living the life of an oriental princess, but she likes it here in the good old USA. Princess Tonga! <laughs> Shall we leave now, George? Huh? Oh, it's early yet, isn't it? All right, princess, all right. Don't tire yourself out. Now, friends, I believe I can speak freely. We're all adults here. Step back, Judy. You're bothering the princess. Friends, when you come inside to see the princess do her complete act, you're going to be watching a girl proclaimed by scientists as the perfect woman. And we all know about these scientists, don't we? All right, princess. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you That inside. girl. And now, She's friends, beckoning to you. To me, sir? Not you mean Princess Tonga? She most certainly is. Well, oh, I, I guess she is at that, isn't she? <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd better see what she wants. The only Princess Tonga. No crowding, please. Room for all inside. Here you are. George, she slipped you a note. I saw her. A note? Well, what do you know? It is a note, isn't it? Well, if you think, George Harvey, that I came here so you could hobnob with dancing girls... Susan. Susan, I'll read it to you. She's most likely just a friend of the family. I, I have a lot of relatives in Cleveland, you know. I'm waiting. Boy reporter, come to my tent after the show. Oh, oh. a friend of the family. Now, wait a minute. I must warn you about something that is being planned. Very important. You must come. Princess Tonga. Well, George? Oh, sounds kind of serious, Susan. Maybe I'd better stay and see what's wrong. Oh, of course. Yeah, but it's uh, it's pretty late, Susan. Uh, if, if you want to wait for me in the car... Well... That's very thoughtful of you. Well, I'll see you in the car, then. Not huh? on your life. You see me in the car. I'm staying right here with you. Oh, well, that's swell, Susan. Swell. I, I just didn't think you liked dancing girls. <laughs> this must be your tent here, Susan. Got a picture on the outside. It certainly has. A nice costume, I must say. Yeah. Well, she uh, comes from a warm climate. Tonga. Tonga. Because she didn't hear me. Well, I don't know why not. It sounded like the mating call of a moose. Oh, well, I'll uh, I'll see if she's in. I'll be waiting right here, George. Oh, it won't take a minute. Hmm. It's dark in here. Tonga? Oh, looks like somebody over there. Is that you, Tonga? Is that... Is this George on the floor? Oh, George, what happened? 
Yeah, yeah. It looks like he tripped over a tent stake, lady. Very tricky things in the dark, tent stakes. Men have gotten killed that way. Will you help me get him up? I should. Yeah. Uh, there we are. What was he doing in here? Was he lost? Well, no more than usual. Come on, George. Tonga? Yes, dear, it's Tonga. Come on, come on. I have a new dance I want to show you. Tonga. You sure he's all right, lady? Oh, yes. Compared with his usual state, he's wonderful. Come on, Gunga Din. Mm. Let's go mm. home. Good morning, Mr. Harvey. How are you, Sammy? Are you combing your hair a new way, Mr. Harvey, or is that a large egg on your head? Yes, I, uh, I won it last night at the carnival. Oh, I see. Morning, Sammy. Hi, Miss Armstrong. And how are you this morning, George? How's your head? Throbbing nicely, thank you. Susan, I want to talk to you about last night. Whether you recognize it or not, there's something going on at that carnival. George, and I... shall we go into my office or shall we debate it before the assembled staff of the paper? Oh, I don't mind. After you, Susan. As I was saying, Susan, there's something afoot at that carnival. <laughs> As I recall, George, it was you. Oh, highly amusing. For your information, Miss Armstrong, I didn't trip over that tent stake. Somebody slugged me with it. But why? That's what I intend to find out. I can smell a story in this thing, Susan, and I'm going back out there tonight and talk to Princess Tonga. Oh, really, George? I'm going to talk to Princess Tonga and... Miss Armstrong? Yes. Well, if I'd known last night that you were the editor of the Star, Miss Armstrong, I could have talked business with you right then and there. Say, Luke Grenard, Miss Armstrong, operator of the five-state carnival. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Grenard? You remember Mr. Harvey? The explorer? Well, how's the head, Mr. Harvey? Just dandy, thanks. Well, watch those tent stakes. Nasty things in the dark. Oh, thanks again. Miss Armstrong, I believe in coming right to the point. Connie's done a nice little business here in your town of Hillsdale. Very nice. And we'd like to reciprocate. Show our appreciation. In what way, Mr. Grenard? Well, just this. You pick a day, any day at all. We'll build it up in your paper, and for that day, we'll turn over the entire gate receipts of the carnival to any local charity you name. Now, how does that strike you? What do you get out of it? George. Well, the man is right, Miss Armstrong, absolutely right. Now, before you go into any deal, you lay your cards right on the table. My concession is, with benefit, of course, from a big crowd. And, as for me personally, I'd reap a fortune and goodwill from your little city of Hillsdale. In show business, that's as good as money in the bank. Well, I'm very interested in the children's milk fund here. All right, the milk fund it is. Your paper will sponsor, and, of course, we'll need a carnival queen for publicity. Oh, well, Hillsdale has some very pretty girls. Well, then let's make it as simple as possible and take the prettiest. Miss Armstrong, you'll be the queen. Front oh. page pictures and you'll be presented with the day's receipts for charity and everybody's happy. Well. Have we got a deal? We've got a deal. Oh, now, wait a minute. Susan, I refuse to allow you to commit this paper to some scheme you know absolutely nothing about. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Miss Armstrong, I... Miss Armstrong, come out to the carnival grounds this evening. Be our guest. And then, if you can come to me and say that the five-state carnival is not the straightest shooting, as friendliest bunch of honest folks you ever did business with, then our deal is off. <laughs> well, I guess nothing could be fairer than that, could it, George? Well, Susan, I still think... Well, that... see you tonight, Miss Armstrong. And, George, watch out for those tent stakes. They cost us money. <laughs> Susan, I've got this Grenard's ankle figured out. And tonight I'll prove to you that I'm right. Oh, really, George? Must you always be so suspicious? Yes. Well, that settles that. Look, Susan, his concessions are crooked, I'm sure of it. They offer you prizes and then they don't pay off. We'll get the whole town out here and they'll be trimmed and then we'll be responsible. Now, how can you prove that these concessions are crooked? Well, we'll go around to a few of them tonight. And I want to talk to Princess Tonga, too. Oh, I just bet you do. Susan, I refuse to be drawn into an argument of this nature. Well, However, well, well, good evening, folks, good evening. How's the Queen of the Carnival and the court jester? Hilariously funny. Good evening, Mr. Grenard. Just pass these folks in free, Tom. This is Tom, Miss Armstrong. With him on the gate, you're sure of getting a good, honest count. Eyes like a hawk. Very glad to meet you, miss. Uh, I'm George, Tom. Miss Armstrong's over there. Sure, I know it all the time. Nothing gets by me, you can bet on that. Oh, Mr. Grenard, if we take over the carnival for a day, do you mind if we have our own man checking the gate? Just as a sort of... Very wise precaution. Very wise, Miss Armstrong. Allison, you folks just circulate around the grounds. Any questions? Just hunt up Sailor Grenard. More than happy to apply. Where do you think we should go first, George? Well, there's the shooting gallery over there. Look at those prizes. I bet they haven't given one away in years. Well, you'd better try it. I, I don't know anything about guns. No, it's just a match, Susan. 
either have it or you don't. Uh, maybe you can learn a little by watching me. And here comes two more lucky shooters. Gather around and watch this little lady take home the prizes, folks. She's got that gleam in her eye. Here you are, little lady. But I wasn't going to shoot. I mean, my Oh, go friend. ahead, Susan. Then I'll show you how to do it later. Excuse me for just one moment, folks. Hey, Charlie, the ladies from the newspaper, get your hammer ready. Every time she shoots, she hits. Get it? All right, folks, stand back for Annie Oakley, just about to take home the prizes. Uh, you appoint it that way, lady. You don't oh. win no prizes for plugging me. Do I just pull the trigger, George? Is that all? Well, there's a little more to it than that, Susan, but uh, go ahead, try it. All right, well. Hey, the, the lady scores a little tight. George, I did it. Yeah, I, I can't believe it. And here's your prize, a giant-sized key be doll. Hold it, sir, while the little lady tries again. Oh, thanks a lot. Well, here it goes. And the number of Don't go to sleep back there, Charlie. I did it again. Yeah, I know, I know. A giant panda for the little lady. Why, she's breaking his folks, but we love it. Hold the panda, sir. It sets off your complexion. Yeah, and you. here we are about to try again for another giant prize. Charlie. She's shooting slow bullets, folks, but they never miss. Son of the giant teddy bear. You can carry one more, sir. You're young and strong. There you are, and come back again, little lady. Oh, I will. Wasn't that wonderful, George? I never knew I could shoot. I can hear you talking, Susan, but where are you? All I can see is teddy bears. Well, you certainly can't say these concessions are crooked. Well, I could, but you wouldn't believe me. After I won all these dolls? Oh, honestly, you and your suspicious mind. Well, I still say there's something going on here, Susan. I'm going to talk to Tonka. Uh, point me in the right direction, will you? All right, George. Come hey, on. Hey, 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 hey. Gather around, folks. Gather around for the greatest attraction on the midway. You won't believe it when I tell you about it. And when you see her, you still won't believe it. The one, the only Princess Tonga. <laughs> Hey, hey, Grenard, I want to speak to Tonga. Come out from behind that teddy bear, George, I know you. Tonga, I want to talk to you. Get away from the princess, George, you bother her. And now, folks, what I was about to here, say... here, hold your cubie dolls. I'm going to talk to her. Hey, Bruno, come over here. What you want, Mr. Grenard? Now, a little weightlifting job for you, strong man. Take George here way back and sit him down. Sure, Mr. Hey, Grenard. wait a minute now. Hey, Tonga, Tonga, you said something was going on at this carnival. You, you wrote me a note. What's wrong? Go ahead, princess. Tell the young chick what's wrong. Here, I never saw him before in my life. All right, Bruno, go ahead. Come on, you. Hey, now, wait a minute. Let go of me. Take your hands off me. You got it. Come on. Draw Sorry, George, but you shouldn't annoy the princess. No, I didn't annoy her. I was just... Well, let it go. Yeah, sure. Are you hurt, George? No, no, just my dignity. But, Susan, you're not going to sponsor any carnival that treats your star reporter like a bum, are you? Well, you have to admit, George, you brought it on yourself. And it is for charity. Susan, charity begins at home. Help me up, will you? <laughs> Back to our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. As we rejoin them, Sammy, the office boy, seems to be heckling George as usual. You're not going to the carnival today, Mr. Harvey? Later this afternoon, Sammy. Miss Armstrong is home fixing us a box supper. A box supper? A date with a carnival queen? For a guy who fights it all the time, Mr. Harvey, you do sensational. I am going along merely to protect Miss Armstrong's interests, Sammy. How do you find work like that? Miss Armstrong's lovely neck is sticking out a mile. She sponsored this carnival. What if something happened? Mr. Harvey, you've been going with her for years, and nothing's happened yet. Sammy, I predict great things for you. From a problem child, you have a great chance of developing into a juvenile delinquent. Leaving, Mr. Harvey? Well, if you see Princess Tonga, I got a message for her. What, Sammy? <whistles> I should never have asked. <laughs> Patience? Yes, Miss Armstrong. Does this look like I've packed enough supper? Let's see. 
Hmm. Who's going to carry this for you? An armored car? Well, we'll be outdoors, Patience. And George will have a good appetite. Outdoors, indoors. To a true champion like George, it makes no difference. Ah, dear, I hope that for once he can forget his suspicions and just have a good time. Knowing George, I doubt it. But I wish you luck. Anything you can recommend, Patience? The Ferris wheel treatment. Oh. You're thrilled yet afraid, suspended way up there under the stars. Uh Uh-huh. You need a strong arm around you to protect, to Before or after we eat? Hmm? I said before or after we eat. Better make it before. From the size of that box, you won't even be able to get him off the ground. Hey, I sir, right this way. Test your strength and ring the bell. All right, step back, folks. He looks like a free swinger. And give that man a box of bonbons. George, I had no idea you were so strong. Oh, it's nothing really, Susan. I've just been doing some push-ups at home for your night. <laughs> uh, oh, look, the Ferris wheel. Shall we cool off just for a while? Oh, why not? Uh, two tickets, my friend. Thank you, sir. Going right up. Pass the bar, please. And here we go. Ooh. We're going up so high. <laughs> just hang on to me, Susan. It's nothing, really. It's... Hey, it is a little high, isn't it? <laughs> We're stopping. Yeah. Right at the top. You think this is safe, George? Oh, sure, sure. All these companies carry insurance. George. Hmm? Isn't that a strange feeling? Just a moment ago, we were we were part of that great crowd down there, and now we're all by ourselves, way above it all. Yeah. Kind of nice, though, huh? Yes, just like we left all our world of cares behind us. Yeah. Susan, I was just wondering what would happen if the wheel got stuck while we were way up here on the top. Would that be so terrible? No, no, not at all. Except that we left the supper in the car. Oh, George. <laughs> I feel a little, a little chilly. All right. Well, the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that better? Much. Ah, oh, this is the way to enjoy a carnival. Your arm around me. The lights, the music, the people down below. <laughs> Just like little ants. Yeah, big crowd. I wonder if we're smart trusting Gennard with all that money. Is that all you can think of at a time like this, George? Well, not exactly. It's just that it's been so long since I've been on a Ferris wheel, I've forgotten how to act, I guess. Well, if you need any ideas, look at the other couples. I don't have to. Susan. Susan, uh, look right straight up at that big star up there. Where? No, no, no. It's over this way. (sighs) Why, George... You took advantage of me. Yeah. And the nice part about it is that uh, science proves that there are over 2,000 visible stars. Oh. Well, 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 Miss Armstrong and Mr. Harvey, welcome, welcome. Thanks. Uh, Just thought we'd stop in and check on the receipts, Grenard. You don't mind, do you? We just wanted to get an idea how things were going, Mr. Grenard. Well, a most wise precaution. Just counting the money here. $1,223. And I feel much safer, George, to turn it over to you right here and now. Oh, well, we didn't mean that, Mr. Grenard. Business, my dear young lady, is business. And you're lucky to have such a hard-headed young man as George here looking out for your interests. (laughs) I'll just put the cash in a box for you, tie it up nice and tight, and... uh, There we are. All safer. Hey, what was that? What? That noise outside, one of the lands. I don't hear anything or see anything either. Well, neither do I. Well, you'll have to excuse me, folks. My one big worry is about that lion, old John L. getting loose. Why, in a crowd like this, well, here's your box, folks. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Grenard. Pleasure is all mine. Enjoy yourself. The night is young. And, George, keep a good eye on that money. Well, don't worry. It won't get out of my sight. George, I knew I could trust you. Tonga. You bet it is. Have you seen him? Where is he? Seen who? Sailor 
Cronauer, that double-crossing rat. He skipped with the dough. What dough? The gate receipts, George. The gate receipts. And owing everybody in the carny three weeks' salary. I found out what he was up to days ago, and he promised to cut me in. I should have known he'd double-cross his own grandmother. Oh, no, Tonga. We were just a little too smart for him. He gave us the money not 15 minutes ago. That's right. George has it right here under his arm. Sure. George, take a look in the box. Oh, it's here, all right. We both saw him put it in. Susan. Booklet. How to learn magic and mystify your friends. George! He pulled a switch. Gave you the wrong box. Why, that... Hey, everybody! That Lars Grenard. He turned John L. loose to cover up his getaway. Well, he won't get away with well, it. As far as I'm concerned, he did. Susan, let's get out of here. Oh, George, wait. Let's stop a minute. I'm all out of breath. Yeah, so am I. I guess we're safe enough here back at the concession <gasps> buildings. If the lion was around, we'd hear people yelling. Oh, you were right all along about Grenard. I should have listened to you. Well, it didn't do me much good to be right. He still made off with the money. I'm just sick about the whole thing. I could... What's the matter? George. What? Inside this building here. I heard someone moving around. Yeah. No, you're right. Hey, in there. Anybody in there? No answer. But there is someone. I hear them. So can I. Susan, there's only one person around who wouldn't answer. Grenard. What are you doing, George? I'm tearing up a tent stake. I'm going in there after. Oh, you you be, wait out. You here. be careful. Yeah. Careful. Now, don't worry. You'll never know what hit it. George, I don't think you ought. Oh, dear, I hope he doesn't. Tonga! Bruno! Over here, quick! What is it? Did you see him? You're gonna catch him quick. He's inside. George went in after him. Alone? Yes, he only has a tent stake. He's a brave man, all Yes, right. he certainly is. But then Grenard isn't very big. Grenard? Who is talking about Grenard? We just caught him trying to start up his car. You caught Grenard? Sure, with all the money. But if you caught Grenard, who... Or what is that inside with George? Well, it's the lion. But don't worry. Old John L. is gentle as a kitten oh, no. most of the time. Why, everybody knows that. Yes, but does the lion know it? Oh, poor, poor George. Grenard? I know you're in here, Grenard. The dark isn't going to do you any good. I'm a big carrot eater. Shh! Oh. Oh, yeah. Must be in the funhouse. Great for the nerves. All right. Come out, Grenard. I can... Oh. Yeah. Well, two can play at this game. I... I bet he's just as nervous as I am. Uh, I'm on to this place now. They can't scare me with a mechanical lion growl. Grenard... He's in here, all right. I can hear him moving around. It's the phoniest lion growl I ever heard. Cheap carnival. All right, Grenard. I can see your eyes now. Are you coming peaceably, or do you, do you want this tent stake around your head? One last chance, Grenard. I'll count up to three. One, two, three. All right. <sighs> Well, he can't say I didn't warn him. George. Uh, George, you're all right. Sure, I'm all right, Susan. But that's more than I can say for Grenard. You better go in and haul him out of there, Bruno. But... I said you better go in and haul him out. Hey, why is everybody looking at me like that? I caught Grenard. Look. Come on, I'll show you. George. Right in here. I hit him over the head with a... a... Susan. Susan, it's a... a... Oh. George. Thank you, and good night, Clyde Beatty. Our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back with us in just a moment.
Say, Susan. Yes, George? I uh, just wanted to get your thinking on this headline on our extra. Intrepid star reporter captures lion barehanded. Well, I think it's all right, George. Who wrote it? Uh, I did. Oh, and Susan, I, uh, I hope you weren't fooled by that little emotional reaction I had when it was all over. I, I knew all the time it was a lion in the room with me, and I... Well, I, I figured that my one chance was to go for just that right spot behind the ear, so George, I... George. Hmm? Do you think you might stop talking long enough to accept a little reward? Reward? Why, yes, I think so. All right. There. Oh, thank you. I wonder how long before the next lion gets loose. <laughs> Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Harry Von Zell inviting you to join us then.